Welcome in this video, we are going to implement the GREAT in form of paper. Uh, this is a paper that is useful when you want to train NERF, but you have a few in input views. Uh, for example, you can see in this figure that when NERF is trained from only four input views, uh, in most cases it's unable to recover the truly structure of the scene uh, on other papers such as Diet NERF and Pixel NERF that also tackle the uh, the, the sparse input view problem uh, with NERF. Uh, they do not get uh, great results with uh, only four input views but the inform of paper can get, uh, can get decent results. Um, and this is a kind, uh, kind of plug and play, so you can uh, you can very easily add it to any uh, NERF implementation. Uh, so that is very great, really implemented in about 100 lines of code. Okay, so this add result we get uh, by the end of this video. So uh, very close uh, to the one from the paper. Of course, in the paper, they only show results from one, uh, from one camera angle, from some other, uh, from some other perspective, results are a, a bit. Uh, there are a bit. Uh, there are so, some artifacts, but I think uh, those are the same from the uh, from uh, in other implementation. Uh, but anyway, these are the results we'll get. And if you've uh, tried uh, training NERF with few input views, uh, you will uh, you will understand that uh, those kind of results are very very great. Uh, okay, so if by the end of this video you find the code useful uh, and you use it, please uh, start this repository. Uh, on in uh, if you like this video please let a, leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more video related to NERF. Okay that being said let's dive into the implementation. We'll use PyTorch uh, to implement uh, everything. So we can start by creating a NERF model. Uh, basically it will just be a standard uh, NERF model. Uh, so uh, yeah the the in front of paper does not uh, does not do any modification to the NERF architecture. So we have a standard uh, a standard uh, MLP with a skip connection. Uh, we are using positional encoding uh, on the MLP is predicting the uh, the color on the density. Uh, the density is uh, does not depend on the direction while the color is uh, direction dependent. Okay so if the standard positional encoding proposed in the initial of paper and then we can implement the forward pass. So first we uh, encode um, the position on the dimension to higher dimensional space with the positional encoding and then we are smearing them to general network. Okay, so so far just a standard uh, a NERF model. Then we can uh, implement this helper function to compute the accumulated transmittance. Again, nothing, um, nothing that change with respect to standard implementation. If you are following my channel, you've already seen this function quite a, uh, quite a lot. Um, so yeah, just taking the alpha values and computing the accumulated transmittance. Now we can move on to the rendering function. So that will take as input a 3D, uh, 3D model. So for example, the NERF model, some rays on that will do the rendering for those rays with respect to the 3D model. Um, then we have the uh, HN on HF, so the near and far plane, the number of bins that will be used to uh, approximate the integral with a quadrature. And now we have an extra parameter T that is coming from the in front of paper. We'll discuss about it in a moment. Okay, so about the rendering, first we sample some time t along the way, uh, and then we can uh, first we sample them uh, in a deterministic way, and then we can do some perturb sampling so that at each time, uh, at each gradient step, we do not sample uh, every time at the same tree location. So this prevents overfitting. So yeah, so we do this perturb sampling, and we compute the delta, so the distance between each uh, time step t, uh, so that we can compute the quadrature. Okay, now that we have those, uh, those time step t, we can uh, compute the position, the 3D position of points sampled along the, the rays. So this is the standard equation of ray, the origin plus t times d. Then we can expand the ray direction so that it has the same shape as the uh, position x. And then we can fit that to the NERF model, so the MLP, to get the color and the density for each point x. Okay. So now we can move on to compute the uh, to do the to do the once we have all those values we can do the volumetric uh, rendering on computer uh, the integral from the uh, for example from the initial NERF paper uh, that by the way was coming from uh, from other work that were quite uh, uh, that were quite old uh, I think it was from the 1970s something like this uh, so anyway once we have the uh, the colors and the density we can compute this equation and approximate the color of each way um, so we can compute alpha uh, and then we can compute the accumulated transmittance based on uh, on alpha okay and now comes the uh, the inner part uh, so you can see it's really uh, uh, it's just a few lines of code so you can plug it uh, to any uh, NERF implementation 
So first, we compute the density of each ray. So basically, we want uh, a normalized density. So for each ray, we divide it by the, uh, by, by, the, by the sum. So we take alpha and we divide it by the, uh, the sum of all alphas. For, for, and we do this for each ray. Uh, and then, uh, so this is the first thing. And basically, what uh, InfoNerf wants to do is to minimize the entropy uh, of those distributions. So basically, the smaller the entropy, uh, the more peaked the, uh, the density will be. Uh, and therefore, it, uh, it means that uh, we are kind of approximating the surface. Um, if, uh, if we have a, like a, a Gaussian with a, with a high standard deviation, that means that we have density a bit everywhere. So we, are, we, have, some, we have something like, a, like smog, like fog. Uh, we have, uh, yeah, we have some medium. But if we have a very sharp density, that means we have a, we, we a surface with no density at all. And then at some point, we have very high density. So that means that we have an object uh, way, uh, way the, with this peak in density. So basically, with uh, InfoNerf, we want to, uh, to minimize the entropy of, uh, of those distributions for each ray so that we, are, we, are, we remove the fog um, and we get a very uh, sharp uh, on, uh, surface. Okay, so the first thing we do, we compute this probability, uh, that, and therefore, based on those probability, we can uh, compute the entropy and minimize the entropy. But what they do as well uh, is they compute a mask, uh, and basically they will uh, they will apply this regularization only where the mask is true. And basically, with this mask, uh, basically the uh, the mask will approximate uh, will differentiate between background and foreground so that uh, the uh, regularization is not applied to the, uh, uh, to the uh, background. Uh, yeah, because this is only, uh, we only want to, uh, to have a peak density where, when we hit objects. So basically we have this mask uh, that makes sure that uh, the density is greater than this hyperparameter t. So it, this is making sure that we have some density. If we, we have no density at all, for example, we have this ligosine where the uh, background is white, so there is uh, nothing. Uh, no density at all, uh, therefore we do not apply the, this, regularization. this regularization. We only apply it when we hit an object. So this mask is, uh, is like a proxy or heuristic to compute where we have objects and where we don't have objects. And then we can apply the mask on the regularization and only, uh, on in the loss, only uh, apply the regularization where the mask is true. And about the regularization, this is just the definition of the Shannon entropy. So the uh, density times the uh, logarithm of the density. And we are doing a safe logarithm, so adding plus 1e minus 10 to uh, avoid uh, numerical instabilities. Okay, so once this is done, we can finally uh, compute the integral. So the weights times the color, and then we, we sum everything. We can also add a regularization for white background, so an extra regularization uh, on top of the one from InfoNorf. So 1 mi minus weight sum. Um, so I will not go into the detail, but this is... Uh, we, we need to do that when we have white background. Uh, I explained that in more detail in my previous video. Uh, and then we can also uh, return this regularization term so that we can uh, incorporate it in our loss when we do the training. Okay, so now we can move on to training. Uh, so this is the same signature as, uh, as for example, uh, the, the main training loop I have in my older videos about North. But now we have two extra uh, hyperparameters, lambda and mul on t, so t is again this uh, hyperparameter for uh, differentiating between background and foreground, and uh, we have a multiplier, so basically this is the, uh, the weight that we'll give to this regularization uh, term in the loss. Okay, so we can iterate over a number of epochs, uh, during each epoch we'll iterate over our data set, so we, uh, from, the, uh, from the data, from the batch, we fetch the origin on the direction of the rays, as well as the ground true pixel value. Then this is a bit like supervised learning. We, uh, we do a rendering, so we render the rays with the model, and then we get a predicted value, so the regenerated pixel values, and then we can compute the, uh, a loss, uh, basically in our case that will be the MSC loss, between the ground truth and the predicted values. Um, so yeah, the loss is just the MSC loss between those two terms. And then we can add uh, in the loss the regularization, so that's why we have this uh, lambda parameter. Uh, and then we can just do a standard, uh, just basically do a gradient step. So we uh, we set back the gradients to zero, uh, otherwise the gradients will accumulate. We do uh, loss dot backward. We uh, we compute the gradients and then optimizer dot step. We update the weight of the uh, nerve model. 
on uh, if we have a scheduler we can also do uh, a step of the scheduler to uh, to reduce the learning rate for example now we can move on to the testing function so uh, given a given uh, given an image index so the uh, the image on which we want to do the testing we retrieve the ray origin and direction uh, for this image from the data set and then we can uh, do a rendering of this image if we try to render all pixels at the same time that will lead to a CUDA out of memory so we uh, split the rays into chunks and basically we, we do batching and we render pixels by pixels to avoid uh, CUDA out of memory and then we put everything together and we form again the image uh, and we can for example plot the image um, and save it okay so once this is done with all the pieces uh, that we can finally put together uh, we can launch training and then do the testing so we can load our our, uh, our data set that i have uh, to make things easier i have already pre-encoded in a pkl file that you can download from the uh, the link is in the github repository so once those uh, data sets are uh, loaded uh, we can uh, basically those data sets were, uh, were generic so the uh, the uh, all the data from the uh, initial of paper so all uh, i think it was 100 training data 200 testing uh, data so basically for training in this case we only uh, sample four images so we uh, we take one image over 30 uh, so that we only have four images as in the paper and now that we have selected our four training images we can create our nerf model the optimizer the scheduler and then we can feed everything uh, to the training function uh, before doing that we convert the training data set which is just a torch tensor a pytorch tensor we can convert it to a data loader and then we can feed everything to the training function uh, obviously it will be quite fast because we only have uh, four training images so which is great um, and then once this is done we can move on to testing on test on the 200 uh, testing views so i really hope this video was helpful to you uh, if it was uh, again please leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more content related to north on to machine learning